I just want to thank the Grail for holding this land for since 1945 as open space here in Loveland and for all the people who have loved it and cared for it. And I'm so happy that we have found this resolution and that we have a new person in Cardinal Land Conservancy who will carry on those values for our community and for our earth. Well, I have to say that it wouldn't, if it weren't for Sharon, we wouldn't all be together. Uh, she brought us together through next door, um, and you know, to, to stop Dries from building 209 houses, and that just started the whole ball rolling. You know, calling around, asking, you know, the different conservation organizations, and you know, um, thankfully Andy and Cardinal showed up because I mean we'd be back with Dries again if, if, if they didn't show up, so. How, how long have you guys known that this was going to happen? <laughs> Does anybody want to yeah. speak about when, <laughs> when you first heard the news that this might be successful? We never stopped working. Yeah, we've never stopped we working. We never stopped talking, we never stopped working. <laughs> yeah. there, there was a moment when this kind of felt really a certainty. Well, tonight, tonight is one. <laughs> tonight is a step. It also was so clear that it was a wonderful proposal mm -hmm. for the Grail, for Loveland, for everyone. Now that we have a ways to go yet, so. Right. And what does that mean? It means we're going to continue to pray for a good outcome. <laughs> <laughs> There are many steps to go yet, so we all want to be careful, we want to stay in a positive direction, and we want to stay on course. The other point is restoring the buildings on the property. I know it means a lot to the Grail ladies for, for healing. I mean, they need to see those buildings come to life again. So, um, with this opportunity of the land, getting the land, I think then we can start raising the money to restore the buildings. So that's going to be the next phase two of this whole thing, if we get, get the land. Who can explain the next steps? I know Claremont County and then, so but then beyond that, the next the steps to apply for. And because we need resolutions of support from local government, the annexation of the Grail into the city is uh, type two so it's actually also in the township. So I need to get Miami Township. I need the letter of support from the township. Then we'll pursue a letter of support from the county, and then we submit a grant September seventh. Who makes that decision once a grant is submitted? There's a who, who who gets a grant? There's a Natural Resource Assistance Council, NRAC ten, which covers grants and they vote on grants and score them from Claremont, Clinton, Warren, and Butler counties. So we compete. And who makes the final decision? The, the, the NREC, the council. They score them all and the highest score gets the first shot at the money. Okay, so they've got the pot of money that the state gave them? or It's they, the state's the money vote. and they, they help manage and hand it out. Okay. Do you know when they will meet to decide? Yeah, well, I can't remember. Probably two weeks after September or okay. three weeks. It's pretty soon. I have to say one more oh. thing, David. I think we'd be remiss not to mention that serendipity has had quite a good part in making all of this happen because I think just a little bit more than a year ago, each and every one of us were worried about and stressing what was going to happen with the land there, but we probably all felt powerless in different ways, but through serendipitous events, we all sort of found each other and um, realized that we might all be from different camps, but everyone had good intentions. And those of us who respected and admired what all of the women at the Grail had done for generations there, wanted to see that continue on the land there. Um, but I know when we came to the first planning and zoning meeting, I lived in Loveland my whole life, and I had a lot of old Loveland friends saying, 
you know, they saw the articles in your magazine and uh, the city count or the planning and zoning um, recording, and they said, thanks for going out, but you know, you're not going to get anywhere, you know, and so I think um, as neighbors, we felt like we were up against big money and development has sort of run through um, quite a bit of what drew a lot of people to Loveland in the first place, which, which are the trees and the green space and the, um, the charming and healthy quality of life here in Loveland. But, um, you know, we, I read an article that you published that Trina Polish had written, and I reached out to her, which then she reached out to all of her friends, and, you know, we realized that there was quite a bit of membership at the Grail that also did not want the land to be developed. So, um, on the other end, Sharon had organized a group of neighbors, and someone just you know, reached out to me, for example, and said, I see your hiking pictures at Grailville all the time, and I know that you care, and I, and I want you to know there's a group of neighbors meeting. Um, so Kevin lives on Rettswood, and pretty much everyone on Rettswood cares about this issue. So it was just little small serendipitous moments like this where people came into contact with other people who cared. And, um, and then we realized we were all very passionate about carrying on um, the type of work that the ladies of the Grail have been able to do there for years. And and the more ladies I met from the Grail, the more I respected and admired them because they're a very resourceful, hardworking, intelligent group of women who are leaders and they have a great deal of love and care for the land. So this is like, this is a triumphant moment for all of us. We met Andy, um, you know, Sharon reached out to him. What was the first time? When do you think? Oh, that's hard to remember. Andy, do you remember? <laughs> do you? That was a long time ago. But Andy yeah, had already, <laughs> Andy had already had Grailville in his heart and mind for a long time. And, um, you know, this was something that had already been meaningful to him before Dries was ever in the picture. So I just feel like, you know, thing, it, the timing was right for the, for the right thing to happen and now hopefully it's gonna be here in Loveland for our grandchildren's grandchildren but we were hoping and praying for someone like Andy because we knew we knew what we needed to do but we thought we need an expert we need someone who can write for you we need someone who knows how to do this you know and so that's what he does for a living and he's great at it we actually had uh, contacted uh, Southwest Ohio Farmland Preservation Association uh -huh. way right. back yeah. with uh, the help of Ohio State Extension Service uh -huh. to protect the farmland prior to the park district even being involved and uh, then that was that's an organ one of the three organizations that gave birth right. to Cardinal. Oh, okay. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I've been at Grailville since 1991 and was involved before that time also, working with the land projects. How well does this satisfy the early, early goals of when the women came to Loveland and bought the farm? Yes, I think it fits right in and is an answer to meeting the needs of today. Um, that's very consistent with our early history.